Well, hello and welcome back. We're looking at Exodus chapter 32 today as the Israelites journey to the promised land. And let me remind us where we are in the story of the Bible. Because this is, of course, after creation, when the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and there's the story of Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden, and they sent out that because they sinned, and the whole creation broke because of that sin. It's after the story of Noah and the flood, where the Lord restarts everything, life on earth, as it was with just Noah and his family, and then all the animals that came onto the ark. It's after Abraham met the word of the Lord. He was chosen, given a new name, Abraham, and given a wonderful promise about Jesus and Messiah, and how Abraham's descendants would be as many as the stars in the sky, so many you couldn't count all those who would trust in the Lord Jesus. <coughs> it's after the son of Abraham was born, Isaac. It's after Isaac had Jacob, and Jacob was given a new name, Israel, and that's why the nation of Israel is called Israel, because they're all descendants from Jacob or Israel. And one of Israel's sons was Joseph. Joseph was hated by his brothers, and because of that hatred, he was sent off to Egypt. You know the story. But because of Joseph's story, Israel's family ended up in Egypt, and from there they grew from being a family to being a whole nation. But the situation was pretty sad, because they were oppressed. They didn't have a good time. They were made slaves. They didn't have freedom. They were forced to work, and were beaten up, and it was all miserable. But they were blessed by God, and the Lord had a rescue plan for uh, them. He chose Moses to go and be his spokesperson to the Israelites and to Egypt, and the Lord sent plague after plague after plague, ten plagues in total, bringing his people out of slavery. And he did it. He rescued Israel, the nation, out of slavery in Egypt, so that they would belong to him and worship him. And that's a wonderful thing, and that kind of brings us up to where we are in Exodus 32 because they were brought out, they passed through the Red Sea, they were wandering in the wilderness, and we'll have a look at some of the other details in future weeks, but they were brought to Mount Sinai before they came to the Promised Land. At Mount Sinai, this whole mountain was on fire. God descended on the mountain and called his people up, but the people were too scared. They said, oh, we don't want to go up. Moses, you go up for us. But Moses went up the mountain, and that's when Moses was given the Ten Commandments. The Lord wrote the Ten Commandments himself on two stone tablets for Moses to bring back down the people, and the Lord also gave Moses all sorts of other, uh, other instructions as well. But whilst Moses was on Mount Sinai, the Lord told Moses, you've got to go back down because the people have sinned. They've already messed things up really, really bad. You see, down at the bottom of the mountain, they were waiting and waiting. They were thinking, where's this Moses? He's been absolutely ages. Actually, Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days. He didn't eat anything or drink anything for those 40 days because he was in the presence of the living God and in his presence. Well, that is life, isn't it? You don't need food. You don't need water to keep you alive when you're in the presence of life. But anyway, for 40 days, and they were waiting and waiting. And so the people... They came to Aaron, Moses' brother, who was uh, the priest, and he came to. They came to him and said, "We don't know where Moses in is. You make us God. <laughs> you make us God, and we'll worship that God, and we'll pretend like that God was the one that brought us out of Egypt and saved us and made us into a people. We'll worship that God that you make with your hands." And Aaron, he should have said, "What nonsense!" What a terrible thing to say. But he said, all right. Aaron said, every one of you take off the gold earring and give it to me. And Aaron took those gold earrings and he melted them all down into one big lump. And then he hammered with a hammer and shaped it into this bull shape, this massive golden bull. And he said, here you are, Israel. Here is your God that brought you out of Egypt. It's a load of rubbish. But the people said, wow, that's great. Awful, isn't it? And they made sacrifices to this golden calf as if it was God. They worshipped it. Anyway, the Lord up on the mountain told Moses, Israel have messed up, you need to go down. In fact, I'm so angry with them that I'm just going to wipe them out and start again with you. And Moses said, no, Lord, please, please spare them for your own name's sake because you have made promises to these people. If the other nations in the world hear about how you saved them from Egypt, but then how in your anger you wiped them out and started again, well, how's that gonna look on you? Because of Moses' prayer, the Lord didn't wipe them out and sent Moses back down. And Moses came down carrying the two stone tablets and he saw the golden cow and he saw what the people were doing and he threw the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments on the ground so that they smashed the bits because that's what the people had done. They'd smashed God's laws to bits already. And Moses commanded that this stupid golden cow be pulverized, ground down into dust and 
thrown on the water and got the people to drink that water. Moses went back up the mountain and he prayed for his people, for God's people. And because of that prayer, they were spared from the judgment that they really, really deserved. Now in this story, we see something about ourselves, our sin, what we're like. Although we don't make golden cows and pretend it's God, we don't pretend it's Jesus who died on the cross, who's saved us from our sin, we need to worship that. Although we don't do that, we do still put other things before God. We do pretend that other things are God, that they're as important as God, or even more important than God. We mess up in this very same way, and it makes God angry. But what we also see in Moses is something of what Jesus is like, because Jesus came to say, Lord, spare them. Lord, have mercy. Don't wipe them out. And Moses went up and he prayed for them. But what Jesus did is he came to earth, he became one of us, and he died on the cross because of our sin. He took responsibility, he took the blame for us. So he died so that we can live and be made right with God. It's wonderful what Jesus done. I really hope and pray that you see him in this story, but also that you trust him for yourself and you have life in his name. God bless.